there we go, um, a little bit about hope. And, um, you know, I think a lot of times when we say, I really hope for something, there's there's a sense of it stepping outside of ourselves that we we kind of um, attribute hope to to an, an ethereal thing that's kind of like outside of, of us, something we would like to have bestowed upon us instead of something that um, is really gritty from the inside. And, you know, I think it's really important to remember that hope is a discipline, that it's not something that we can just like pie in the sky reach for every once in a while, but it's rather something that is, is deeply, uh, rooted in discipline, that it has to be something you choose every day uh, in some way, shape or form. So try to prioritize hope in some way. Um, it doesn't have to be about like the whole big world. It can be about something very simple, um, but try to nourish the, the sensation of hope and the feeling of hope and the thoughts of hope in in your world as best as you can. And then in regard to hope that again, it's not this ethereal thing that, you know, is, is um, light, but rather hope is gritty. You know, that, you know, I read something yesterday about hope um, is, you know, she gets herself up off the cobblestone pavement, spits out the tooth that just got knocked out and gets up for another fight with, you know, bloody knuckles and, grit in her hair. And I think that's a really important way to think about hope that there it's gritty. It's not um, smooth and, and spacious, but it's rather textured and, and um, you know, filled with, with might. Okay. So um, try to shift your sensation around hope to be something that's uh, strongly cultivated within you. Okay, so um, let's sit up straight and tall and take a moment to uh, come into your body, into your mind. Um, Ruth, I, before you arrived, we need a we need a smushy ball for today's practice. So if you have one, don't worry if you don't. You can use a block instead. But we're gonna we're gonna work with that a little bit. So as you come to a comfortable seat move around and wiggle and until you feel like, oh yeah, I, I got this. My body's, my body's here with me. Right? So get comfortable, get propped up a little bit, a little bit more underneath your seat if you need it. And just take a moment to close your eyes and drop in. And the beauty of a regular daily practice of attuning to the inner world is that hopefully you can shift into this place fairly quickly. You know, that even just the simple posture and closing your eyes is a habitual cue to go in. So as you do, notice your breathing. And see what it feels like to just open up some channels for breath. It doesn't have to be the perfect breath. It doesn't have to be a manipulated breath. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, even a useful breath. Well, there's nothing you need to do with this breath other than to just observe and feel yourself breathe. And as you do, you know, what's in your way? Are you, are you gulping for breath? Are you having this upward energy that is attached to the inhale? Can you drop down a little bit and expand wide a little bit? Can you notice all the other pieces of the puzzle beyond just filling and emptying your lungs? Can you sense your shoulders and the muscles around your neck and your traps? Can you feel um, the diaphragm and let all this musculature that's involved with our breathing soften a little bit and be receptive? Can you rest the eyes? Soften the cheeks. Notice your posture. Is there anything that needs to shift a little bit in order for you to be aligned well so there's a sense of stability and ease in your body? As 
as you notice both the inhale and the exhale, pay attention to the subtleties of that transition between the two. Now that we're getting a little bit more aware and practiced in the breath, we can space, create a little more space, a little bit more space and time, you know, where you stretch the length of the exhale just a little bit longer. And let that rebound inhale that comes be one of fullness, not one of um, reaching or gulping, but just allowing. And if you're comfortable, if your body is sustainable in this, notice and just elongate the pause after the exhale, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be this long breath hold, but just see what it feels like to rest in that quiet space at the bottom of the out breath. When you feel the refreshment of the new breath after that pause, receive it. Open yourself up for the fullness of your inhale. your awareness to um, move a little bit more expansive beyond the breath and feel the grounding of your pelvis as you breathe. And you feel the pelvic floor expand as you breathe. That oscillation of expansion on the inhale and the gathering in on the exhale. Are you able to create space in your abdominal space so that the breath is mobile and moving and free. A lot of times we sense the breath up in our face and in our nose and in our upper chest. Sense the breath down low in your pelvis. Ready, bring your hands together at your heart and let's just feel into this centering mudra where you can place prayer and blessings and offerings and gratitudes, all these things that we hope and wish for the world and for ourselves. Use the hands. And let's find our way coming on to our back. So as you lie down, remember to bring your ball with you. We won't use it just yet. <clears throat> All right, so as you stretch out and lengthen on the ground, let's enjoy the simplicity of uh, being supine. Maybe it's been a while since you've been lying down in bed. So let's just enjoy the return to that horizontal. And before you do anything at all, just have a moment of Shavasana where we feel the whole back body melt into the ground. Let's scan, check in with your body. How are you feeling? Are there areas of pain or discomfort that you need to tend to today? Can you feel like the ground has, has you? Can you feel like it's got your back, literally and figuratively? Or is there support all around you? And when you're ready, reach the arms overhead and enjoy the invigoration. Maybe stretching through your right side, stretching through your left side, and just enjoying all the space, reaching and lengthening and opening. And then 
draw your knees into your chest and let's rock a little bit, swaying from side to side. Okay, feel that little bit of a slosh bucket in your body. Rocking is such a nice soothing thing for your nervous system. Doesn't matter if it's you know standing rocking, lying down rocking, sitting rocking, rocking chair rocking, any kind of rock. Let's hang on to the knees and give some circles to the pelvis. Feel into the sacrum. Let your low back relax a little bit here. Change directions, a few passes in this way. And then open up your knees away from the middle and swing them back in. So just get this nice opening through the hip joints themselves. Uh, feeling a little along the rims. And then take the soles of your feet together. Knees fall out to the sides. Of course, you can put blocks under your knees if you need a little support. Take your arms, cactus them, or bring them straight out or up overhead. But just have another moment of feeling that the ground's got you and we can be open. We can let our pelvis open, we can let our belly, our chest, everything opens. Breathe deeply here. All the way to the belly, all the way to the pelvis. Okay, bring your knees back up into your chest. Give a hug. Pick up your heads. Hug in snow. And then reach out big and wide. Starfish your body out in space. Exhale. Drawing it in again. One more times. Open up big and wide. Exhale, small and snug. And you know, maybe the trajectory of movement in your shoulders or your legs is not just in and out. Maybe you have some rotation, whatever feels nice. And place your head down. Keep your knees into your chest and right knee, and left leg long, and let's mobilize our ankles and our feet. Such important parts of our bodies to uh, stay open and free. So enjoy the fact that you don't have snow boots on right now um, with all the snow that's outside and you've got hopefully some nice bare feet where you have a lot of freedom. Give a good squeeze to that knee. And then we're gonna cross the right knee over toward the left, a pretty big open twist here. And don't go too far, let your spine dictate how far you go and just open across your chest. And as usual, if you'd like to kind of slide your arm on the ground and just feel your way into some shoulder movements here, whatever feels nice in your body. How's your breath? When we start to pay attention to other parts of ourselves, notice if your breath gets lost. Come back to center knee and pick up your head and hug the knee snug and tight. And then release that leg and let's switch sides. Left knee into your chest. Straighten the right leg on the ground and feel your feet move around. So go beyond you know, your toes and your ankles and feel what this does for your shins, those peroneal muscles on the outside of your um, calves, the calf muscles themselves. We're opening up the bottom of the legs. A good squeeze of that knee and then let's cross the left knee over to the right. You don't have to go super far, just be where you are. You can even put a block underneath your leg if you'd like to. Open up across your chest and feel free to be still. Feel free to have some mobility here. Slide your arm, your left arm around. Full breaths. Enjoy what the twist feels like as you're breathing. Great, and then come back. Spread your limbs wide. One more time, a big star. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Roll around in your wrists and your ankles. And then draw your knees into your chest. Pick up your head. And let's roll to the side and come up onto your hands and your knees. And notice just the simple warm-up um, that we often do. You know, so tweaking it a little bit here and there. But notice if just the simple act of a few stretches has shifted something in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, in your sense of presence, in your breath. Uh, it doesn't take much. You don't have to do um, crazy yoga in order to feel deep, 
deep lasting impacts of your practice. Start moving through some cat cows. Right, so how do you feel in your body? Can you feel all the other bones that connect to your spine, your ribs, your sternum, your collarbones, your shoulder blades, your skull, your pelvis, Obviously, all, all those things don't touch your spine, like your shoulder blades aren't connected to your spine, but uh, by default, they are. There's a lot of linking up of movement. See if you can feel a lot of those joint spaces open up, and then feel free to move any way you want to do. You can wag your tail, kind of swish like a fish, or you can circle and move around to see what feels really nice. And now, if um, you know your emotional states tend to freeze you, if you get a little frozen when you're stressed, um, notice your rib cage in particular. So right now, come to a flat back, and we're just going to move our ribs in a big circle. So over to the side, down toward the ground, over to the other side, side up toward the sky. Flare your rib cage. See if you can feel that relationship with your shoulder blades. Collarbone, sternum, just sense into all the rotational movement that you have available right now in your body. And then go the other direction, swirling a circle in your ribs like you're inside a paper towel tube and you're trying to paint the walls of that inner tube with your rib cage. Try not to miss any spot. How's your breathing? All right, and then return back to a cat cow, and then settle your body down to a child's pose. Let's have a little rocking here, left, and right. Just see what it feels like to drop some weight into one side and drop some weight into the other side. How's your breath? Seek stillness again, and then walk your hands over to one side. So we have this giant open body on the side. Drop weight into your sit bones, spread out your palm, melt the base of your skull, and feel the breath travel deeply. Come back to center. Walk the hands over to the other side and feel that opening here. Drop some weight into the sit bones, feel the breath. back to center up onto all fours let's find a deeper twist now arm reaching up to the sky thread the needle twist your spine drop your head breathe deeply sense into um, the blessing of mobility that you're cultivating in your body and then inhale Reach that arm back up in the air, hand down onto the ground, switching sides, arm up, slide the arm under, twisting the spine, enjoying this range of motion, breathing deeply. Ready, lift that arm all the way back up in the air. Hand down onto the ground, onto all fours, almost off, off the ground here. Right leg straight back behind you. Left arm out in front of you. Push the ground with your shin and your hand. Feel that stability in the center of your body and reach your limbs long. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, elbow and hand uh, or elbow and knee underneath you. Inhale, reaching out, press your hand and shin. Exhale. Drawing it in. One more time. Reaching long again. Hand and knee down onto the ground. Let's switch sides. Left leg up, right arm up. Push the shin and the hand into the ground. Integrate your core. Ribs knit in. Look at the ground. Take a deep breath in. As you're ready, exhale. Elbow and knee underneath. 
Inhale and lengthen. Feel the fullness of your breath. One more time. Come down onto the ground, back to a child's pose. Feel the deep compression in your hips. Stretch your arms out in front of you. Let's pick up your hands, get your elbows on the ground, and just roll around in your wrists. Keep opening up through your hands. And then release the hands down again. Dog pose. Push through your feet to lift up. Knees up off the ground, hips high. And enjoy the groundedness of this pose. We have so much contact with the ground. Our heads are low. It's a very safe pose. It's a, a high quality of feeling grounded and safe when we're this close to the ground and we have all this contact. So enjoy. Feel your way into your breath. Dropping one heel down, dropping the other heel. A little bit of movement in your pelvis, your legs. And then walk your feet forward and come to Uttanasana. A deep forward fold, ground through your feet, bobble your head a little bit, grab some blocks if you like them. Inhale for a halfway lift, growing longer in your spine. Femur bones up and back. Spread open the bones of your feet. And exhale. Melting and folding, relax your skull. One more time, a halfway lift, opening up through your spine. Exhale, melting and releasing again. Push off your feet, rising up, bring the arms up to the sky, feeling that extension, open up through your heart. Cactus, open your arms, enjoy the open chest. And then reach high again, look up, reach high. Tip back just enough, just a little bit to feel all those back muscles support you. And then exhale and have a big swan dive forward again. Inhale for a halfway lift, melt and fold. Step back to dog pose, feeling the length of your spine again, reaching through your body. When you come into this pose second time around, notice the differences. Yield and then push and reach through your body. You grab through the index finger bells, the thumbs. How's the feeling of your breath? Let's come forward into a plank and hold a sense of very sturdy self. Push the floor away. So, you know, this is the grit, the grit of hope. Push, push, push the floor away. And let's. Put our knees down onto the ground and find the earth. A few rolls of the shoulders, opening things up. And inhale, chest opening, cobra pose, elbows to the vent, draw the collarbones wide. Exhale, and melt again. Lifting on up, feeling that back bend, live in your body, open through the front. Exhale, and release. Let's take the arms wide like a V on the ground, palms stay grounded, lengthen. Now with your hands wide, feel the reach of your legs. Lengthen your whole, both legs. Lengthen from your hips to your feet. And then exhale and relax to come back down. Up on tall fours, swish your spine around. Let's grab some blocks and we're gonna bring our right foot in front. Left knee down on the ground to begin. Feel the chest open wide. Enjoy that hip flexor stretch, opening up through the front of that uh, left leg. Curl your toe under it and lift up into a full lunge. All right, let's bend and straighten with that front knee. Take your time feeling your way into the beautiful sensation of stretching your hamstrings. When you straighten that front leg, it doesn't have to go all the way straight. Maybe you want to pick your toes up and tuck your chin and get your sciatic nerve to lengthen. Maybe you'd rather keep your foot on the ground. So just find what feels right today. Once you're grounded again in your lunge, root your feet. Rise up, 
crescent lunge, reaching those arms high. Tip back a little bit if you can do this without compressing your lumbar spine. Find your breath. Let's cactus open the arms and feel the spaciousness around your heart. And then release your hands down, back foot comes forward, fold deeply. Halfway lift, gathering your breath. Exhale, melting to fold, stepping your other foot back. Our left foot is now in front. Place the right knee down on the ground. Just open up that hip flexor. Hip flexor. Feel the fullness of your stretch here. Wide collarbones. Feel your chest. Open up. And then let's go ahead and lift that back knee up off the ground. Find your lunge. And let's start to move. We're bending and straightening the front knee, feeling our way into a beautiful movement with breath. foot wants to stay down, maybe you want to pick it up, see what feels good. The next time you get to a lunge, ground yourself, feel your feet, root down, rise up. Maybe extending the arms, maybe your arms want to go somewhere else. We'll see what it feels like to be in your body. Ground your legs, knit your ribs in so you're not pushing your whole chest forward. Open up by lengthening long and wide. Exhale, hands down onto the ground, back to a dog pose. Feeling that extension one more time in your body. Come forward into a plank. Show a little grit to yourself. Push the ground away. Index finger mounds, root. Integrate through the center of your body. Lots of core. Okay, let's come down to the ground. Maybe a shoulder roll, just so you know where those shoulder blades are living. Take your arms down at your sides, palms facing the ground. Lift everything you can up off the ground. As the arm bones lift, reach your arms a little higher, legs too. And then exhale and relax. Come up on tall fours. Wiggle your spine around. Any breath. We'll do a little bit of core work on the ground here. So now we need our little smushy ball. And hopefully your body's feeling, you know, fairly warmed up and open, kind of connected in with a lot of parts of ourselves. We're going to take this ball halfway full or so. So, you know, you experiment. The less full it is, the um usually the more balance you have, but you just kind of have to experiment. And we're going to put this under our sacrum. Okay, so find your breath here for a moment and just get used to having this. Notice, is there a release? You know, does something let go? Um, this always reminds me of being on a water bed. You know, it's just not uh, very stable. And that's a good thing. That's what we're looking for. Having a little, something that's a little unstable um, can really give a lot of um, nervous system uh, activation. And that's what we want. We want to get unfrozen. All right, so fill up your breath. Empty your breath. A lot of times when we feel um, like we've had a little bit of an assault or an, our uh, stress state, it can show up in the pelvis and in the belly and in the low back. So you just want to find these places and nurture things a little bit. So feel into your breathing. Melt everything you can. All right, we're going to start some um, work. Still relax. Don't move anything yet. Just listen first. We're going to do a few sequencings here of working with the core. Um, first, we're going to start with our arms down, and eventually we're going to uh, grab a block and put it between our hands and do some arm movements too. So have a block nearby. All right, so 
first just sense, you know, do you tend to lean left? Do you tend to lean right? You know, what's your, can you balance evenly across your sacrum or is that challenging? Is it, does this feel good for your back and pelvis or does it uh, feel a little vulnerable? So just kind of know yourself. All right, so we're, there's choices here. If you're feeling very vulnerable, the um, most stable way to do this is to start with your feet on the ground and your arms, palms facing up on the ground. And if this is where you're starting from, we're gonna slowly lift one knee up and then slowly bring that foot back down. Reintegrate and then switch sides. So the key to this is to do this very slowly. Let's all start like this, okay? Couple passes each side where we're grounding with one foot, we're breathing, lifting one knee up and then dropping it back down, trying to stay stable. And by stable, I mean your core, not your neck and shoulders and arms doing the work, but um, your core doing the work. So try to relax the upper body. After a couple of passes, rest here and melt one more time. And now notice how that feel? Is that kind of where your sweet spot is? If so, we're gonna repeat that. If you have more to give, we're gonna bring our knees up in the air. Feet are um, parallel to, our, to the ground, okay? So right angles with your knees. Notice if you're using your upper body here a lot, try to stay neutral and if you can't, put your feet back down. And okay, now if you're in this position, we're going to tap the heel down toward the ground and slowly lift it back up. And if you're on the ground, we're just going to keep lifting that knee and then dropping it back down. All right, and so notice as you do this, if you have preference, you know, if you're like, oh yeah, I got this side, but oh, the other side feels weird or not as familiar. Notice if you're gripping your neck, shoulders, if there's a lot of weight in your arms or your head, See if you can be very relaxed in the upper body and using the deep core to stabilize yourself here. This actually requires so much engagement um, of the pelvic floor, the deep transverse abdominis, your inner thigh muscles, but even more importantly, your nervous system to kind of constantly be cueing the feedback of stability is really good for you. Make sure you're breathing. Try not to hold your breath while you're doing this. Slow and steady. Try not to go fast. You know, the desire of my people is to whip right through this. But the faster you go, the less aware you are of what's happening in that nervous system control. All right, now when you're ready, put your feet down again. Let's lift up the hips and get off the ball. We're gonna go back onto it, but just have a moment of resting solidly on the ground. Let your nervous system feel the groundedness of a, of a broad, unmoving base underneath you. So no more waterbed, now we're on solid ground. Breathe into the pelvis, take the soles of your feet together and your knees out to the side. A moment of Supta Baddha Panasana, of course, support underneath your knees. All right, we're going to layer onto this so you can do the first position we did, the second position we did, or you can do the third. I have to turn to do this because I can't reach my arms over my head. So, again, Bolster, I mean, sorry, ball underneath your sacrum, not in your low back. And now we're going to have our hands holding a block. Okay, so palms together, or not palms together, palms to the edges of the block. And let's first, with two feet on the ground, start to sense bringing your arms overhead. And just notice what's changing in the core of your body, your deep abdominal muscles, as you have to brace against the long lever of arms overhead and then bring your arms back so hands are over chest. And just another time of sensing the subtleness. Now, if you went through this and do it fast, you probably wouldn't notice the core engagement that is happening. All right, now we're gonna decide, this gets a little um, you know, tricky for our, our nervous system. 
Um, but we're going to either start with our feet on the ground and lift one knee up and then down another knee up, or you can start with your knees up and tap. So either of those first two positions that we did, and we're going to raise our arms overhead, holding that block as we either tap the heel or lift the knee, and then back to our neutral position, arms over our chest, switching sides. So either your feet are on the ground and you're lifting one knee, or your knees are up over your hips and you're dropping one foot. Your choice. Make sure you're breathing. Knit your ribs in as you do this. Move slowly. Full breaths in. Full breaths out. Try to be as stable on the ball as you possibly can be. Right, now do one more round, finish with whatever side you didn't start on. All right, then put your feet on the ground, lift up your hips, get off the ball, drop the block, just rest. You can have your legs straight or bent, whichever you need, and just feel all that contact with the ground, lots of support. So you can do lots of crunches. I mean, there's so many different ways of strengthening your abdominal muscles, but sometimes the subtlety of balancing while um, you know moving levers in your body of your arms and legs can be a very uh, waking up for your nervous system, which is a really nice feeling when you're feeling frozen. All right, let's put our feet on the ground. Okay. Now we're going to do this um, similar thing, but we're going to do it with um, our knees up if you can, and no more block or no more ball. So it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel different because we're not having to balance uh, our body weight on that ball. So again, you can start with your feet on the ground, but if you're able, feet in the air. And instead of heel down, straighten one leg as your arms come overhead and then back up, bent knees and bent arms. Straighten the other leg, we're not touching the ground, and then back up. All right, make sure you're breathing. Long levers in your body. Knit your ribs in, find the ground. How is your breath? Notice how different it feels when you're on the ground. Feel those long levers, lengthening one leg out, both arms overhead, hug that block, and then back into neutral. Okay, finish on the side. You did not start on. Get rid of that block for a moment. Feet on the ground. Breathe deeply. Now let's lift our hips and scoot them over to the right. Knees come up and drop them to the left. Open up across your chest. Big breath into your belly. And then back to center. Scoot your hips over to the other side. Drop your knees. Twisting open. Come back to center. Stay on your back. We got one more thing to do. Feet on the ground. We're going to keep our feet on the ground the whole time. Hug the block. Two hands. And we're going to bend our elbows at a right angle. Drop your elbows down to your shoulders. So shoulders integrate into the ground. And then just start to bring your, your block toward the ground while integrating the shoulder blades. So try to resist the urge to just let your arms fall, your hands fall toward the ground. Elbows down into your shoulders, shoulder blades finding the ground and then tap the block. And you can just go back and forth here a few times, feeling that deep integration of the shoulder blades on the back as you hug the block. So give a little energy onto that block. It's not just a placeholder. We're having a little hug. How's your neck? Can you relax? All right, and then stretch all the way long, arms and legs, reach into length, and then 
knees into your chest, roll to your side and come up to your hands and knees. All right, so let's find a forearm plank. We're gonna put a lot of that together. You can put a block in between your hands if you like, or you can have an L, you know, where your, your thumb and your index finger wrap around the block, palms are on the ground. So choose the way you want your hands to be in relationship to the block. And we're gonna lift up. Let's start with dolphin pose actually. So lift up your hips, push your forearms into the ground, lift your shoulders away from the ears and feel the hugging onto your ribs. So feel all those muscles engage on your rib cage. Relax your serratus. And then we're gonna slowly walk our feet back and we're gonna integrate the core of our body. Shoulders away from the ears, shoulder blades on the back. Push your forearms into the ground, hug the block. Integrate all those muscles around the ribs. Find your deep core. Even though we're not um, balancing on the ball anymore, those deep muscles in your core are binding their way into the pose. Inner thighs lift up, stretch your heels back, stretch your crown, find your breath. Hug the block, press your forearms into the ground. Shoulders down away from the ears. Feel the ribs. Grit. Okay, can you have a little gritty hope? All right, rest on the ground. Bring your hands under your head. Pick up your feet and windshield wiper your knees left and right. Lift back up into all to all fours. Move around in your spine, breathing deeply. Lengthen into a dog pose and feel the reach in your body. Breathe fully and deeply. And let's walk our feet forward. Come to Utanasana. Grab your elbows and just let the um, energy of gravity. Lengthen your rib cage out. Push through your feet for a halfway lift. Hands on blocks. Melt and fold again. Climbing up, rising to the sky, reaching the arms high. And then release your arms down. Interlace your hands behind your back or use a strap if you can't reach your hands very easily. Open up across the front sides of your shoulders. A full breath here. And then let's melt into a forward fold. Arms come away from the spine. As the arm bones lift. And then relax the arms down. A halfway lift. Melt to fold. Push up your feet, climb on up. And let's find a wide-legged stance. Elbows inside the knees, bend the knees. Let's say hi to our legs, drop some weight into the feet. Open up through those toes and spread the bones of your feet wide. And then inhale and climb back up. Turn your feet to the right, come into Virabhadrasana. Drop your shoulders down, open up here, root into the feet well, lift open the heart. Feel your legs support you, so there's a deep grounding and lengthening. And then let's find those side bodies and open them up into a reverse warrior. You can even take the bind behind your back if you'd like, just see what feels good. Opening up here, feel the ribs stretch and broaden. And find your way into Parasvokanasana. Stretch the other side, open and broad. Reach your foot into the ground so there's that full body length. Come back up. Let's turn our feet. We're going to go to the other side, bend your knee. Virabhadrasana two, to start with, drop the shoulders, stretch open from your heart to your hands, reach, find that 
that fascial pull from your heart to your fingertips. Drop the shoulders down, drop your feet down. Feel that deep grounding, the supported nature of your legs. Hold your breath here. Let's reverse the warrior. You can take the bind behind your back if you want to, or have your hand on your leg. Open up through your ribs, feel that extension. And then turn the pose into Parsville Konasana, arm overhead. Feel the deep reach of your legs. Push your feet into the ground. Open up your breath. Relax your neck, feel your shoulders drop away from the ears. Make contact by spreading your feet out and rooted to the earth. And come all the way back up, straight legs, wide legs. Relax your head down, come into an inversion. So you can have your arms wherever you want them, head wherever you want them, elbows up and back. Spread your feet, unlock your knees. Turn one more time back to the front of your mat, last of the dog poses. Feel the deep roots, feel the length rise. And then let's come into a child's pose and just let your arms come down at your sides and rest. Feel the compression in your legs. Open across your back. All right, we're gonna to come to a heart bench. So you can have one block underneath your spine, one block underneath your head. If you don't like being right on blocks, you can put a blanket over the whole thing so that you have a little more cushion. When we come into this posture, you want to make sure, if you're super long, um, maybe the block is long ways down your spine. If you're more short, then maybe the block is across your shoulder blades. So just kind of feel for what feels better for your body. I'm kind of right in the middle. So sometimes I do it one way, sometimes I do it another way. Just see what feels right. And now, once you get here, play with where you want your arms to be. You can experiment with some different forms of chest opening by having your arms be in different positions. And then also remember your legs can do different things. Let's start out with just some straight legs so you can just feel the grounding. But after a little bit, if you prefer to have your legs um, come into Supta Baddha Konasana, that's an option too. So sometimes hurt, hope, hope and courage require us to just spend some time melting the heart open. We can't be very courageous or hopeful if we have our heart sealed and locked in a chamber. So do what you can here for the physical heart, where you can feel attending to the heart itself, not just the heart chakra, but the, the heart itself.
take a couple of more full deep breaths here. Let your rib cage open. And then when you are ready, roll to your side and bring your knees to your chest. Maybe take one of those blocks underneath your head for a moment and breathe into the back of your ribs. As we prepare for Shavasana, you might need a little twist or a little happy baby or both. I would start with the twist. Just release some of the energy from your spine that might have, um, you know, gotten a little axed by doing a back bend. So maybe a twist to each side, opening up your breath. Maybe completing your practice with a little bit of a happy baby pose, maybe a little rocking or anything at all. You know, we haven't done much in the way of hip stretching. If you're craving a little bit of a reverse pigeon, you can throw that into the mix. Just kind of find what you need to settle your body for Shavasana. There's no right or wrong way to enter this pose. So best thing you can do is just kind of ask your body, is there anything else you need in this, um, this go on our mat? And then as Shavasana arises, make sure, as always, that you have the support that you need, that you have the warmth that you need, that you don't have bright lights shining on your eyeballs. You know, just Seek the comfort of a restful pose. Shavasana is really important not to be missed if you can manage it. When you get to a comfortable position, whenever that arrives for you, take a moment to have a sense of deep gratitude for your yoga practice, for this, um, you know, the time and space that you carved out in your day to care for yourself. Gratitude for your body and your resilience and the way that your mind is healthy and your heart is open. So much to be grateful for. Just kind of sink into that gratitude as you rest your body.
taking your breathing. And out the body one more time. Feel that sense of just surrender. Beautiful gift to let go. I want to invite some invigoration into your body. Breathe deeply. And perhaps I invite movement, maybe small to begin. And maybe you can grow that movement to include a big stretch, whatever feels good to you. Actually finding your way to your side. Pausing there for a moment to just give yourself the grace of your practice. Let it be absorbed. And eventually coming up to a comfortable seat. Bringing your hands together at your heart. And again, this familiar mudra, let it center you, let it connect you, let it ground you. And offer your blessings to the world, maybe one person in particular, maybe the whole world or anything in between. Namaste. All right, thank you.